This chapter explains what a database is and goes through the MySQL commands needed for this project. If you're already familiar with the basics of using MySQL in PHP MyAdmin and know what those terms mean, you can import the SQL file initializeMoviesDatabase.sql, which you'll find in the Initialize Database folder in the Working Files. This sets up the Favorite Movies database as it is at the end of this chapter, allowing you to move straight on to Chapter 8. If you haven't used PHP MyAdmin or MySQL before, then you should complete this chapter. A database is an organized collection of data, records of items, stored in one or more tables. Each record is a complete set of information, and each one is made up of individual items of information called fields. So, to take a driving license database as an example, each record would contain all the details related to one person. That person's first name, last name, date of birth, driver license number, any motoring transgressions, etc. Looking at our favourite movies project, each record in the movies table will consist of a single movies title and description, the column names of the table being the names of these individual fields. We we'll also want to guard against the possibility of two different movies having exactly the same title and description, perhaps because they're different releases of the same movie. And we do this by including a unique identifying number, so that whatever else is the same, no two records can ever be confused. This identifying number or index will be set up in such a way that it can never be repeated in the table. We'll also have a table called moviegoers, where moviegoers details will be stored. This will be very similar, consisting again of an ID number, unique to each individual, and the individual's first name and last name. Then we need to have a way to link the movies table and the moviegoers table so that we can store certain movies as favourites for each user. A crude way to store favourites would be to store a list of favourite movies and the names of the people that like that particular movie in a table called Favourites. So, for example, if The Twilight Sage was a favourite of Stephen Jones, Sweeney Todd and the Queen of Sheba, the Favourites table would start out like this, with the movie listed three times, once for each person who likes it. The immediately obvious problem with this is that we now have three records for the same movie. This is a bad approach, because each of these records just refers back to the same single entity, and each movie should be stored as just one record in the database, not repeated each time someone adds it as a favourite. If there were lots of users and movies, this would rapidly lead to an enormous database with a huge amount of duplicated data. As before, when we looked at coding, if we find we're duplicating identical information, we're doing something wrong, and we need to think again. The proper way to do it is to create a linking table consisting just of the ID numbers from each of the two tables to be linked. I've omitted the description column here from the slides just to save space here. So, in this example, we want to store moviegoers who like particular movies. We take the movie IDs and user IDs, which link the movies and the moviegoers, and store these in a new table called Favourites. So here we have the movie ID 1 linked to user IDs 1, 3 and 5, the IDs of the three users who have that movie as a favourite. Then we link these user IDs to their details in the moviegoers table. This approach avoids all duplication of data. And a database which consists of a number of tables linked in this way is called a relational database. This course will demonstrate how to set up a relational database for our favourite movies project and deploy it over the web. But first, in this chapter, we'll learn how to work with the database using MySQL. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. And the my part of MySQL is apparently the name of the daughter of the founder of MySQL, Michael Vidanius. MySQL is one of the most commonly used languages used to control databases, to create and delete them, and to add, modify and delete data, as well as to select data according to criteria that we set. 
The first and simplest way to work with databases is to use the phpMyAdmin interface that we looked at briefly in Chapter 3. This graphical user interface, or GUI or GUI for short, allows us to do everything there is to do with the database simply by clicking on buttons. And we'll often use this to perform maintenance tasks on our database, as it's the easiest way to do jobs of this sort. The downside is that we have to click buttons every time we want to do anything. Nothing can be automated, so its main use is for one-off jobs, such as maintenance tasks, for which it would be too much trouble to write a program. Working with the GUI is easy, and it doesn't really need much instruction. By the end of this chapter, you'll be able to do that. The second way is to use the MySQL command line in phpMyAdmin. This involves typing commands into the SQL box. It performs exactly the same tasks as clicking on buttons, and it's the easiest way for us to learn how to write MySQL queries. The third and final way is to embed MySQL in PHP scripts. This is more difficult, but it allows full automation of all the functions of MySQL so that it can be deployed over the web. This allows multiple users to query the records of the database, perform searches, and change the contents of the database. In the next video, we'll begin by using the MySQL command line in phpMyAdmin to work directly with our MySQL database and learn some key MySQL queries.